before I start, I would just like to say that if you aren't any of these people who have left a question for me for my future 10k Q&A special, then be sure to leave a question on this video on top of any other comments you'd like to say. And uh, yeah, as always guys, don't forget to drop a like on the video as that would help me out a ton, and consider subscribing to the channel for some more awesome Jujutsu Kaisen manga videos appearing in your sub feed. With all that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Alright, so this is gonna be more of a chill, laid back discussion type of video, so go and make some hot chocolate, or if it's hot, then go get yourself a cold Coca-Cola bottle, because I'm just gonna be talking about the Cullen games and why I think this arc could be the best arc in Jujutsu Kaisen. I wanted to do this video because recently I was rereading the Shibuya Incident arc, and every time, man, every time I read that Shibuya Incident arc, it never fails to give me hype and enjoyment for from all the highs that arc offers. Eventually, I continued reading up until the latest chapter, that being chapter 163 as I'm recording this video, and I realized that when this Culling Game arc was releasing weekly, it felt good, but nothing compared to when I read it all in one binge. So if this arc feels very fast paced so far, I think a part of that might be because you're reading the chapters weekly, but when you go back and binge all of it up until the latest chapter, the pacing does feel fine. And so I was recollecting my thoughts about the Culling Game arc and just realized how there's so much potential for this arc and I'm just gonna list all the things that could happen which would make this arc the best arc in the series so far. Now if the things that I listed down don't eventually end up happening that's okay because these are just my thoughts but I know Gege has a lot of things up his sleeves that you or I don't even know about. So the first thing that the Cullen games will offer are a bunch of fights. That's very obvious since it's a literal deathmatch but to talk about specific fights, Yuji versus Higuru I know will be very big, big for the both of them, and while I'm excited to see the actual fight going down, I'm more excited to see how this fight will end, because there's a lot of morality and interesting ideals that these two characters have, and you know, because of what Higuruma has been through, changing the way he perceives things just makes this fight a lot more intriguing, and it's also been a while since Yuji had a major fight, um, his last major fight was with Mahito in the Shibuya incident arc, so yeah, I'm really excited for that fight. Uh, we also have Hajime, who seems very enthusiastic and is a sorcerer from the past, so he or she could be very strong. I'm looking forward to seeing what sort of connection Hajime had with Sukuna. Uh, we also have Angel, Regi, and Remy. There's just a lot of awesome matchups to look forward to, because right now we're seeing Yuji and Megumi's perspective, but later we will see Hakuri, Panda, Yuta, Maki, etc. And there could be even more villains, more characters that just haven't been introduced yet, and and maybe some Kyoto students, who knows. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the fights in this arc. Next we have Sumiki. I am very intrigued to see how Sumiki will play in the Kalen games. Is she gonna act as that plot device for Megami to go more of the anti-heroism path? Is she potentially the game master for the Kalen game? Will she play as some sort of sacrificial role for Megami to choose? There's just so many ways Sumiki can run this arc, depending on how Gege chooses to play her role and there is a solid theory of how Sumiki is the game master. I'll leave a link in the description for the Jujutsu Shi, but to read it out loud, it says, Sumiki was cursed to be the game master. The Asahachi bridge victims were shown to be walking around and did not have this curse mark on their forehead, so we can assume that the curse mark is not the result of the finger bearer. Recently, the Cullen game player Higuruma was shown to be in a court case awakening his curse technique. The curse mark is not on his forehead before his Shikigami is summoned, and he is not in a coma either. Cullen game player Fumihiko Takaba was also shown beginning to awaken his curse technique as the new 70 to 30 sorcerer. He is also missing this marking and is not in a coma. However, when Kenjaku uses Idol Transfiguration, the marking on Tsumiki's forehead is still there. The Idol Transfiguration is the exact same symbol as the marking on Tsumiki's forehead. Him transfiguring those people may have been the trigger for the start of the Cullen game, and Tsumiki was the very first victim of Kenjaku. Since he gained cursed spirit manipulation from taking over Geto's body, he only had to satisfy the vows he made with past sorcerers, not curses. She was the person who he gave the role of Game Master. Edit. I forgot to tie it all together with the spiciest piece. Kinjaku brought back the death paintings and, 
their first mission was to stop the bridge curse, which would have killed Sumiki soon and potentially ended the Cullen game. He wasn't going for the finger necessarily, he was trying to save Sumiki as well. So that's the theory of Sumiki being the game master, some very good evidence, and even if she's not the game master, her role in the Cullen game will be very big and I'm excited to see how much it will not only affect the story, but Megumi's character. Lastly, to talk about some major events that I see happening in this arc, I think we're going to get the full deep dive of Yuji's past, his whole backstory and origin, you know, his connection with Kenjaku, so that's going to be really cool, looking forward to seeing that. Um, you know, Gojo's going to get unsealed by the end of this arc, Sukuna is probably going to do his Enchain thing and use that Binding Vow, which would end this arc and transition into the last arc, which would make Sukuna the final big bad. Nobura could potentially come back in this arc and we could see her revelation with unlocking reverse curse technique. There's just a lot of things that could happen that we don't even know about. You know, all the things I just mentioned are only what's projected to happen, so the Cullen games is stacked. If Gege manages to flesh this arc well, I think it could be the best arc in Jujutsu Kaisen, better than Shibuya, because when you think about it, right, the preparation for the Cullen game took like 20 plus chapters, so you know that the Cullen game arc itself is going to be long. If the setup for it in general was 20 something chapters, then you would think that the actual arc would be 30 to 60 chapters, honestly. I think this is the second last arc in JJK, um, or at least the second last major arc, Gage can always add like a mini arc in between, after it, somewhere, I don't know. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about all of this, and can you think of any other moments that might happen in the Cullen game, which was not mentioned in this video? Do you think this arc will be better than Shibuya? Do you think it will be the best JJK arc in general? Comment down below, as I do read your comments, but... Yeah, one more thing I want to say is October 31st, Jujutsu Kaisen, the first movie trailer will drop on Halloween. I know I kind of mentioned it in my last video, but uh, especially like yesterday and today, there's been a lot of rumors going on saying it's going to drop on the 31st, it's going to drop on Halloween, so uh, be on the lookout. Unfortunately, I won't be able to actually make a video on it right away because on Halloween, on Sunday, I will be working throughout the day. If it does come out on Sunday, then you're probably going to see a video of me talking about it on monday the day after but yeah that's all for me today thank you guys so much for watching this video it's been the fake weeb and i'm out peace